Hello and welcome to this vlog from Flamingo Land Resort. As you can tell, we're not there at the moment. I'm actually starting this in our accommodation, which is really nice actually. I'll put some shots on screen now from it. But yeah, we're staying in Scarborough, which is about 25 minutes from the park. I'm not going to do an entire vlog of the weekend because it is just pretty much Flamingo Land and a couple of other bits. We went to a little vintage fair today but I didn't think it was worth vlogging but yeah the main reason I'm going back is obviously to try out their brand new roller coaster the Intamin 10 inversion Rev B model sick I've actually not been to this park for three years so it's going to be interesting to see the other changes around there anyway enough of me talking I'll see you inside the park So I have just had my first ever ride on Sick and that was brilliant. Um, I love the fact that you've got more freedom because of the lap bars. It felt better paced than Colossus. I obviously said in the fourth vlog just after I rode Colossus for the first time that it felt quite slow. That did not feel slow at all. It had a good pace to it but the one thing I will complain about is the fact that when you're going through those heartline rolls at the end of the ride I don't know like it's quite painful you're being pushed up into the lap bar obviously and I'm not gonna lie it does hurt a bit uh, I honestly prefer those heartline rolls on Colossus you may think uh, a bit daft but nah but yeah overall it's a very good ride I'm not sure where it ranks in terms of my top UK coasters I completely messed up that shot, oh well. We're going to Kamali now. So we've just done Kamali, obviously a Vacoma SLC. And I forgot how good, how intense and how smooth that ride is compared to Infusion. I'm obviously used to Infusion now, I'd only done it once last time I came here. So this ride still seems quite rough to me because obviously it is an SLC, they're not smooth with things but now I've done Infusion more this is so smooth in comparison, it's so good honestly so since we last spoke to you we did Mumbo Jumbo and now we've had lunch and we're gonna go on Cliffhanger so yeah this is obviously an SNS shot and drop tower similar to Ice Blast at Blackpool Pleasure Beach. My first ever time on this because I was too scared to do it last time I came and then Josh convinced me to do Ice Blast a month later and I thought it was pretty boring but hopefully this won't be too boring. It's about to do its drop now, there we go. And obviously Ice Blast doesn't have the drop and doesn't give any air time however this actually looks quite forceful so yeah I'm really looking forward to it we've now done cliffhanger which was everything I said that I expected it to be very forceful you got some good air time on there unlike ice blast and I've just done sick again and after a second ride I can definitely say I'm not actually the biggest fan of those lap bars on the heartline roll the problem is they're too small so it puts a lot of pressure on your legs and it's just so so painful In case you couldn't guess already, 
flip-flop is currently down so it doesn't look like we're going to be getting on that wanted to do that for my first time as well I've now come over to the flat ride that's pretty much next door to Flip Flop and this is Pterodactyl I believe it's called it's a star flyer and I do love star flyers uh, but yeah we did Velocity I should mention it's very busy today um, it's about 2 o'clock in the afternoon and we've only just done Velocity for the first time um, which just goes to show never seen this park so busy in my life but yeah I want to do this but I am here with my mum today, if you couldn't guess. I'm not here with Josh or anyone, and she doesn't want to do it. And obviously I'm visually impaired, however, um, we're not going to be able to do it because my mum doesn't want to come on and you need a carer, which is a shame. I think I'll wait to talk more about the disability system here until I get home, but yeah, it's a shame because we did do this last time we came. My mum didn't like it, but we did do it. And I really enjoyed it, so it'd be nice to go on here. Again, you get some great views across the park, actually, on it. Uh, but yeah, this was down before as well, but it has just reopened. Uh, but yeah, it's just going to be a case of re-rides, I think, now. And no, actually, we need to do Twistosaurus. So we will do Twistosaurus. But yeah, then it's going to be a case of getting on Kamali, Velocity and Sick again, I think. Because Hero is down. So we're not going to be getting on that today either. Speaking of Mumbo Jumbo, here it is. I just thought I'd show you it because I didn't show it you before. We're not going to be doing this again today because I personally think it's quite painful on the shoulders. I have pretty bony shoulders and those s and restraints are just annoying you basically have these like shoulder collar things that really staple you in and we had a bit of trouble with the disability system before on this as well We've just had our last ride of the day on Kamali and I'm making a bold statement here that ride is better than Nemesis I'm sorry Nemesis fans but I just think the layout's better it's more intense it doesn't have the helix but let's be honest that's all that Nemesis has going for it um, so yeah I, I really enjoy this coaster it's made my top 10 UK coasters now it's that good let me just try and get the loop for you. I know you've already seen it in the little cinematic I'll be putting together. Yeah, I didn't get that very well. But yeah, really good. We did sick again. Uh, and I'll talk about it a bit more when we get home. But I do think it's pretty overrated, to be honest. There we go. I am now back home. But do not click off yet because there's some important stuff I need to talk about that I haven't mentioned. Overall... I think Flamingo Land is a very good park. I feel like I've made it out to be a bit negative in this video, criticising some stuff about some of the rides. However, my thoughts on this park aren't really negative at all. I think it's really good, in all fairness. It's got a brilliant collection of rides. There's tons of stuff for families to do, which I haven't even covered. And there's even a zoo, so it's at least a one-day park, maybe even a two-day park if you want to do absolutely everything. I obviously said I think Sick is quite overrated and the main reason I said that is ironically due to the design of the lap bars which is the entire thing that is meant to make this ride a lot better than Colossus. Now don't get me wrong I do think that this is a better ride than Colossus because I think the seats are a bit more spacious you obviously don't get any headbanging whatsoever 
However, the heartline rolls are quite painful and that is due to the pressure that that lap bar exerts on your legs. The reason being that it's a small lap bar. It's not like the lap bars on, say, the Mac multi-launch coasters like Icon of Blackpool Pleasure Beach where they cover the whole area of your thigh. This lap bar is very small and thin and it sits just above part of your thigh and it's got kind of like a sharp edge that digs in as you're getting hang time on the Heartline Rolls, meaning that I actually prefer the Heartline Rolls on Colossus because you do go through them quite slowly so you get more hang time rather than being whipped through them which is, well, painful on sick and those over the shoulder restraints don't really bother you on them, you don't get head banging because of how slow the movement is anyway. Nevertheless though, Sick is still a very good ride, it sits towards the bottom of my UK top 10 and I was expecting it to be a top 5 if not a top 3 UK coaster, so I guess it has underwhelmed a little bit, but it's still a very good ride experience overall, you get a lot of freedom which you obviously don't get on Colossus with the lap bars, but those heartline rolls just take away from it if anything and for reference Colossus doesn't even make my top 10 so Sick is definitely the better of the two. It's safe to say though it's definitely worth visiting Flamingo Land to give it a ride. Another thing I just want to talk about that I touched on earlier is Flamingo Land's disability ride access system and how I think it could be improved. On the surface it's the same as the Alton Towers and Fort Park ride access pass system where you were given a time card you go up the exit for the ride, well, at Alton Towers at Fort Park, it's usually a dedicated ride access pass queue. And based on whatever the queue time is, you'll have a time written on your card, and that is the time that you can go on the next ride. My main issue with this system at Flamingo Land is that it's not very consistent compared to Alton Towers and Fort Park regarding how long you get written on the card based on the queue time it really depends on what staff member you have because different staff members seem to be doing different things and in general i don't think that the times being written down were that generous in all honesty like we must have had two or three rides that we went on where we had an hour written on it don't get me wrong it was busy but for example when we went to go mumbo jumbo there was a little queue up the exit with obviously people using this system so it took us about 10 minutes to actually get on the ride and hence have the time written on our cards. Now the main queue length was around about an hour but despite the fact we waited 10 minutes we still got an hour written on the card whereas really it should be a maximum of 50 minutes. On the other hand when we went on Kamali one time the staff member wrote 10 minutes on the card even though the queue was evidently longer than 10 minutes, the main queue I should clarify, and when we went on sick the first thing in the day, we got 45 minutes written down when the main queue was 90 minutes. Another issue I have with this system is the fact that you always get put on back row of the roller coasters and Alton Towers are guilty of this as well on rides such as Nemesis. Well, any rides at Alton Towers where you're queuing up the exit. I know it can be frustrating for people in the main queue when you just get assigned a random row and they don't get to ride because of it. But that's why merge points should be a thing. And also, I know in some instances it's done for evacuation reasons, so they always know where the disabled person is on the train. But, and this leads me on to this next point, when you have to have a carer with you and that, is it really that big an issue? Like, I don't really understand why at all, to be honest, as long as they know a disabled person is on the train. I don't really understand why they necessarily need to be put on the back row. And in regards to the care of thing I just highlighted, they're incredibly strict. No matter what, you have to have a carer with you and it has to be one carer per disabled person. So you couldn't have like me and Emily have had at Blackpool Pleasure Beach before where it's two disabled people to one carer. If you try and go on a ride with two disabled people and one carer, they won't let you on it pretty much, it's incredibly strict. I think they should allow one carer per two disabled people to be honest because in the event of an evacuation, really you could just evacuate one person at a time if that makes sense. If it's getting to the point where there's three disabled people per carer then yeah that is getting a bit extreme but I think two should be allowable like it is at Blackpool Pleasure Beach. And yeah, not all disabled people may necessarily need a carer. It depends on the disability. So 
the fact that that's basically enforced, I don't think it should be. What they should do is they should have it like they have at the Merlin parks where there are basically different tiers of ride access pass depending on your disability. So, for example, at Alton Towers and Fort Park and whatnot, there's like a yellow card for people who don't need a carer and a red card and people who are given the red cards or ride access pass ID have to have a carer with them to go on the rides. And I personally think that's how it should be. But yeah, this system essentially prevented me from going on the Pterodactyl Star Flyer because obviously my mum didn't want to go on it. And I mean, for rides like that, in terms of an evacuation, especially, I don't think disabled people should need to have a carer with them because, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure to evacuate a Star Flyer, you could just lower it to the ground anyway. It's not like a coaster where you'd need to climb down a load of steps. Like on a coaster, I can completely understand why they'd want a disabled person to have a carry with them because obviously the evacuation for that is quite complicated, but not for any kind of flat ride. Like for example, I've been able to do Red Arrow Sky Force at Blackpool Pleasure Beach on my own before and had no issues. Even though strictly speaking, I do need a carer and I do have a red ride access pass ID for the Merlin parks. For flat rides, it shouldn't be so much an issue compared to the coasters. So there you go, that was quite a long discussion about Flamingo Land's disability access pass system. But overall, regardless, we had a brilliant time. But Flamingo Land is not the only park we've visited this summer. Go on, click the cards on the right side of your screen to go and watch my first ever visit vlog to Fort Park Resort. And it's safe to say, not everything went to plan.